I'd guess at around 60 bees in here, like between 50 and 60 bees. Wow, I can hear them. So if I open up the colony with no gloves on this time, it's a bit brave. Yeah, then they won't go anywhere. So we have all kinds of crickets and cockroaches, as you can hear from the chirping. Um, we have a Madagascan hissing cockroach down there, actually. I found really random stuff in here before, like Lego. Scientists can find loads of different uses for toys and stuff. Um, so this Play-Doh right there, for example. <laughs> so this is what a big bag of pollen looks like. So we give about half a teaspoon every three days at the moment. Um, these ones get half a teaspoon every two days because there's obviously a lot more of them. I bet they wish it was this easy in the wild to acquire all the, all the food that they needed. <laughs> it's actually meant to be quite nutritious for humans. A few of my friends have tried, tried the actual pollen because it's meant to be quite good for you. You can get it in health stores and stuff. Have you never tried? No, no I'm not trying it yet. <laughs> We're just heading to the bumblebee lab at the moment. So this is the Bumblebee Lab, and um, this is Cami's project, and this is my project that I'm running at the moment. So here we have four, four bumblebee colonies that all have just one queen in them at the moment. That there um, is pumping out nectar, it's pumping out 1.854 microliters of nectar a minute. It takes the nectar from here, which is in this bottle, a sealed bottle passes through these special tubes which have an inner diameter of 0 0.13 millimetres, so it's pretty small. And then if I just turn it around like that, you can see this wheel moving really slowly, just pushing the liquids all the way through. And then these are splitters here, so we've got four of the tubes heading over here. And right now, because I don't have any bees in there, I'm just the nectar sort of collecting and dripping down into here, because um, it gets pretty messy and pretty sticky. Um, if we just left it. Bumblebees need nectar um, as, one, as one of their two main food sources. It provides them with sugar, so energy. Um, it's their carbohydrate, carbohydrate source, like bread and pasta and stuff is for us. Um, and then we give them that pollen, so about half a teaspoon of that every three days. So that provides them with their protein. Yeah, this is one of my queens. Um, you can just see her sitting in the, in the middle of her hive at the moment. She's already got eggs in her. She's already mated with um, males, which are called drones um, in bees. Um, and she only will mate, have a mating period one time in her life. So she stores all that sperm for the duration of her um, queendom, I guess. Um, and that's the same with ants as well. This is the connection here for her to go into the flight chamber. There's been a couple of escapes. When I've got my first ever colony, which is that one there, and we were testing out my setup. Um, my connection between the hive and the flight chamber wasn't very good. Um, and as a result, one managed to worm its way out. Um, and I, I just got a fright because I was just messing about with the fitting and then one just kind of sort of came at me. And I, I just, it was the first time it happened. So there's a little bit of panic there, I won't lie. Um, but we just switched off the white light and I switched on the red light um, and then if there's only red light in here, it looks black to them because red looks black to bees, so it's, they won't fly in the dark, essentially. We've got um, two ballasts there, um, which are high frequency. So the normal lighting that you can see here, that's running at a much, much lower frequency, and it essentially looks like strobe lighting to bees because um, they, can, they can see light in a very different way to humans. Um, and the actual bulbs themselves, are trying to replicate daylight light colour as much as possible. You'll probably notice that normal lighting is more of a yellowy colour. Um, this is actually very meant to be very calming light because um, it's to replicate daylight as much as possible. So hopefully it's keeping us calm while we're actually doing the research. <laughs> and why is that good for the bees again? Because um, it just replicates um, their outdoor environment as closely as possible and we want them to behave as close to their natural behaviour as they possibly can. What were you saying about the red light? There's a different sort of light that comes on that calms the bees. Yeah, do you want me to show you? That would be awesome, yeah. Yeah, so if I actually I'll switch the red light on first so we're not in the dark. <laughs> so the, there's a colony of uh, 
I'd guess at around 60 bees in here, like between 50 and 60 bees. Wow, I can hear them. So if I open up the colony with no gloves on this time, it's a bit brave. Yeah, then they won't go anywhere. There have been a couple of adventurous ones, like you might occasionally catch one like zipping around. It won't actually fly high into the air, but it will zip around and I'm not sure whether that's to sort of scare off any predators, but generally they just... So if we were to put the other light on now, they'd all probably fly out. Yeah, some would want to fly out, yeah. Um, ones that stay in the colony and are like have mainly colony duties, which tends to be the smaller bumblebees. Um, they'll just stay put, but the ones that want to forage will uh, yeah, attempt to go find some flowers. The lighting that we've got is actually on a 12 hour timer uh, there, so it comes on at 7am and goes, on at, goes off at 7pm. So they actually do have nighttime and daytime in here as well. Um, and the room is kept at a constant of about 23 degrees, which is sort of uh, quite an optimistic uh, British weather. Um, but because I've got queens in here and I want their hives to feel warm so they can produce eggs, it has to be a, a, like a good British summer day sort of temperature.